Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Software Development with C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about the basics of make, clean, and phony targets. So in the last video, we looked at the basics of writing our own make files. So we looked at how we could write rules and how those rules were composed of targets, prerequisites, and recipes. Now, a lot of times, another thing we want to include inside of our make files is a way to clean up after our project. So a way to say, delete our object code, any executables that we've generated and things like libraries. And the way that we typically do that is with a rule that has a target name of clean, right? That way we can run the command make clean. So we're going to look at a simple example of how we can write a rule called uh, uh, with a target called clean and also how we can make it uh, a little bit more robust and avoid some corner cases uh, by using this thing called phony targets. So let's go ahead and get started here. We'll go ahead and go into our first directory, the zero make, and we'll have an example that's somewhat familiar here, right? So we have uh, our same example from last time where we have uh, some add function implemented in one file, this add.cpp, just a simple function that returns the sum of two integers. Then we have our function prototype inside of this header file, this add.h, and then we have our, uh, our main function in this print add.cpp, right? So just a very simple main function that just says std see out the result of add here of 10 and 20. So what we did last time was we implemented a make file to build this executable. So let's go ahead and take a look at this make file that we've slightly changed, right, in order to support cleaning. So we'll go ahead and open up this make file here. We see our original three rules from last time. So we have a rule for building our object code add.o from our source file add.cpp. We have another one for generating this object code print add.o from this um, source file with our main function print add.cpp. Uh, and then we have our final rule down here to generate our executable uh, print add, right? From those two previously generated pieces of object code here. Now, along with these uh, three rules, right, we have a fourth rule specifically for cleaning up after a project. And we can see that the rule is pretty simple. We're just going to delete uh, using RM, both our executable, print add, and our pieces of object code. So we're just using this wildcard matching to match anything that ends with this dot O here. Right, so we have a pretty simple idea what's going on here, right? Uh, to implement something like a clean uh, functionality inside of our make file, we can really just write another rule whose target is clean, right? So whenever we run uh, make clean, it will run this uh, the recipe for this rule here. This rule doesn't have any um, uh, prerequisites to it. Um, and then it'll just clean up after a project. So let's go ahead and see how this works. So the first thing we can of course do is we can run something like uh, make print add, right? To go ahead and generate our executable. And you can see that make uh, you know, does all the nice stuff for us in terms of tracking our dependencies with our other two rules here that generate our object code. So we generate our two pieces of object code before generating our executable here called print add. So we can see all of that in the same directory here. And of course we can run this uh, simple executable, just prints out 30 here. Now, because we have this rule called clean, right? We can also run make clean, right? And you can see that it runs this rule that deletes our executable and our pieces of object code here, right? So you can see, um, you know, with that rule, we were able to clean up after ourselves. Now, an issue or one of the issues that we can run into uh, with uh, make clean is what if we actually have a file inside of our project uh, with the name clean, right? So we can go ahead and do that. So we'll just create a file called clean here. Um, we'll rebuild our project here, uh, this print add. Now what's gonna happen this time if I do something like make clean, right? What's going to happen? Well, it turns out nothing is going to happen. As far as make concerns, it has nothing to do here. You can see make returns telling us that clean is up to date here. So let's go ahead and open up our make file again and try to understand this a little bit better. Now this clean rule down here, or this uh, rule with the target clean here, um, it's really just like any other uh, rule that we have defined um, inside of our make file. If make sees that this target is already built here, it, it, it thinks that it has nothing else to do here. So that's exactly what's going on, right? Make is trying to be clever here. It looks and sees if this target is already built here. So if clean is already built and it sees that there's a file called clean already generated. So make things there's nothing really to do here. So it doesn't run our RM command, right? There's a bit of a disconnect here between 
um, us having a file name clean and us trying to express uh, just an action we want to perform called clean, right? We're not actually trying to build something called clean here. Um, really, we just want to perform some action, right? But as far as make is concerned, uh, from this rule as it's defined, make thinks that we're trying to build a file called clean here. So how do exactly do we get around uh, this kind of issue? Well, one way we can get around this kind of issue is with phony targets. It's a way of expressing that uh, we want to more unconditionally run this uh, recipe, right? It's more of an action we want to perform uh, no matter what, not say necessarily a single file that we want to create here. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, quit out of here. And let's go ahead and take a look at how we can you know, use a slightly modified version of this make file to, to get that result. So we have the exact same setup, right? We have our add.cpp, add.h, print add.cpp, and then this uh, file called clean here that's, that's making a mess of our make clean uh, rule. So we'll go ahead and open up this uh, make file here. And you can see what we've done is we've declared clean to be a phony target. So you know, that's really the only change we've made to this file, right? Our original three make rules are the same. Even our clean, um, you know, our rule with the clean target is the same, but we've just marked clean as being a phony target. So if we go ahead and take a look at the right-hand side of the screen, I have the uh, GNU make documentation. I'll make sure to link uh, this just below the video here uh, into this section on phony targets. And you can see that by marking uh, make clean, right? or this uh, clean as this phony target, uh, clean will run the recipe regardless of whether there is a file named clean here, right? So we're gonna get that result of being able to run this regardless of you know whether that file name exists. So we can go ahead and quit out of here and we can of course build our executable here. So we can do something like make print add and you see that builds our executable and we have these two pieces of object code. And remember, clean, this file still in this directory, but now I can just run make clean, right? Make no longer cares that there's a file called clean that's already in this directory. It runs that rule or that recipe regardless. Okay, so that's a bit of the basics of how we can implement something like make clean. Um, it's a very useful thing that you'll often see included in make files and as part of projects. Now, phony targets, as we just saw here, are not exclusively used for um, uh, you know, just make clean rules, you'll of, often see them used, you know, as you can see later in the documentation for things like, you know, when we're doing recursive uses of make here. And that's a topic that we'll be looking at in later videos. Now, as always, uh, you can find this or any of my other, uh, you know, piece of code or examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But as always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.